What is happiness? In psychology, happiness is a mental, or emotional state of well-being, which can be defined by, among others, positive or pleasant emotions, ranging from contentment, to intense joy. To behaviorists, happiness, is a cocktail of emotions we experience, when we do something good or positive. To neurologists, happiness is the experience, of a flood of hormones, released in the brain, as a reward for behavior that prolongs survival. Is happiness a destination or a journey? The hedonistic view of well-being, is that happiness, is the polar opposite of suffering, the presence of happiness indicates the absence of pain. Because of this, hedonists believe, that the purpose of life is to maximize happiness, which minimizes misery. Happiness is evidently the key goal of life. Why? Because happiness is the fundamental attribute that all humans apparently seek. What would provide the best life for humans to achieve happiness? Each of us goes through unique individual experiences, and construct individual perspectives, of our external world. It is within these individual perspectives, that we all form our understanding, of what is desirable to each and every one of us. This is why we witness certain people pursuing a life of competition, while others, choose a life of the arts, or learning. Regardless of our individual desires, all of us share common desires regardless of their individual perspectives, these are, shelter, warmth, sleep, food, water and other basic necessities. Eudaimonia is a Greek word, commonly translated as happiness, or welfare, however, more accurate translations have been proposed to be, human flourishing, prosperity, and blessedness. In the work of Aristotle, eudaimonia was used as the term, for the highest human good, and so it is the aim of practical philosophy, including ethics and political philosophy, to consider, and also experience, what it really is, and how it can be achieved. It is thus a central concept in Aristotelian ethics. The ancient Greek society, believed that acquiring friendship, wealth, and power, will surely bring the seekers happiness, which in effect, allows them to partake in the greater notion, of what we call, the good. We call people good, if they perform their function well. For example, a person who plays the guitar well, is a good guitarist. Playing the guitar, is the guitarist's function, because that is his, or her, distinctive activity. The distinctive activity of humans, generally what distinguishes us from plants and animals is our rationality, thinking or acting, based on reason or logic. When talking about happiness, we consider a person's life as a whole, not just brief moments of it. Thinking about it, does this mean that a person, can be judged as happy, only after death? That is, once we can examine the person's life as a whole. However, a good person will always behave in a virtuous manner. Even when faced with great misfortunes, a good person will bear himself, or herself, well, and will not descend into mean-spiritedness or, doing wrong thing. As time changes, elements that comprise human flourishing change. People found means to live more comfortably, explore more places, develop more products, and make more money. Humans of today are expected to become man of the world. Technology has well advanced since the middle of the 20th century, especially after the end of the Second World War. Everyday routines are marked with technological advances, that reflect what a society is good or known for. Technology has made man happy, but there is more to that. Aristotelianism This views technology, 
as basically a means to an end. To Aristotle, technology is the organizing of techniques, in order to meet the demand, that is being posed by humans. This may seem that, technology is primarily concerned with the product. Technology will be judged, as either good or bad, based on the value given to the product, based on its use, and effect to the society. Technological Pessimism Technological pessimism holds that, technology is progressive, and beneficial, but it is also doubtful in many ways. This views technology as a way of life. Technology has become a framework which humans cannot escape. It has introduced ways on how to make things easy. Jacques Ellul, a French philosopher who is an advocate of this view, has the following pessimistic arguments. 1. Technological progress has a price. 2. Technological progress creates more problems. 3. Technological progress creates damaging effects. And 4. Technological progress creates unpredictable devastating effects. Although Eliel has strongly spoken of his arguments, they are still found to be weak and not true at all times. Technological Optimism This view is strongly supported by technologists, engineers, and also by ordinary people. They believe that technology, can alleviate all the difficulties, and provide solutions for problems that may come. It holds that, even though technological problems may arise, technology will still be the solution to it. Existentialism Martin Heidegger, a German philosopher, strongly opposes the view that technology, is a means to an end or, a human activity. Technology, according to him, must be understood, as a way of revealing. This means that everything we perceive, or think of, or interact with, emerges out of concealment, into unconcealment, from being hidden, to being out in the open. Technology embodies a specific way of revealing the world, a revealing in which humans take power over reality. Technology reveals the world as raw material, available for production, and manipulation. There is danger to this. Humans will also interpret themselves as raw materials. We already refer to people as human resources. The solution to this is that, we need to open up the possibility of relying on technologies, while not becoming enslaved. The society in the face of science and technology. When one looks around him now, he will see that man, tends to find his happiness, in the works of modern technology. Smartphones, tablets, laptops, that come in different shapes, and sizes, with distinct features, seem to be the measure of man's value. Social media, has also affected the lives of many. Face-to-face -face social interactions, are being lessened, and people keep working hard, to update their gadgets. There seems to be no contentment, as every time a new product is released, man finds another need, that can only be answered by a new product. These new products, also tend to replace man in the society, as the demand for manual labor, is becoming less and less, because of the availability of machineries. A balance has to be struck between technology, being instrumental, a means to an end, and anthropological, human activity. For Heidegger, the solution for this is that, man should not be controlling, and manipulative, of what he was set upon, but to also allow nature to reveal itself to him. With this, according to Heidegger, man will have free relationship with technology. This has been Eddie. Thanks for joining me, as we delved into, the human person flourishing, 
in terms of science and technology. See you next time.